What do worms eat? Well, they'll eat anything that was once alive and is now dead. But when it comes to your home worm bin, it's a little more complicated than that. We'll get to that on today's video. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. What can I feed my worms is about the most common question a new vermicomposter has. And while the answer can be really simple, we don't want to stink up our worm bins or our own homes or poison our worms by being indiscriminate with what we feed them. As I said in the intro, worms eat organic matter. And organic matter is dead and decaying plants, animal manures, and the animals themselves. Even you and I will become worm food given enough time. All of these break down and become a small fraction of soil. And this is a great time to tell you, and if you've been following my channel for a while, you've heard me say this before. If your soil does not have worms in it, it's because your soil lacks organic matter. In other words, your soil does not have food for worms. Adding worms to lifeless dirt, expecting them to turn it into loamy garden soil, is like dropping thousands of people off in the desert and saying, have fun guys, I'll be back when you turn this place into Eden. It's not gonna happen. Okay, back to the topic at hand. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. I want you to think about worm food, AKA organic matter in two categories, carbon rich browns, often called bedding, and nitrogen rich greens, which is what most people think of when they consider what to feed their worms. For the home vermicomposter and even the large scale worm composters, let's toss aside the idea of using composting worms to process dead animals, their meat or meat based products, and that includes dairy. If you absolutely must compost meat or dairy products, I would look into black Black soldier flies or bokashi and that's not in my wheelhouse just yet so that leaves us with plant-based products and manures as a worms foods of choice whether we're talking about browns or greens let's talk about browns even though most manures are brown colored virtually all browns come from the plant category i'm talking about paper cardboard wood chips sawdust peat moss coco core dead leaves all of these come from plants. These materials break down slowly and typically have carbon to nitrogen ratios well higher than 30 to one. What we refer to as worm bedding is almost always this carbon rich plant-based material. And unlike other animals, worms eat their bedding. So remember, it's organic matter, so the worms will recognize it as food sooner or later. Okay, let's talk about greens. Since we've eliminated meat and dairy, our greens will come from either plants or manures. For plant-based greens, we're talking about things like fruit and vegetable waste alongside recently cut hay and grasses. Fresh leaves from shrubbery and cannabis and hemp cuttings and things like that. These should all be considered greens. Now this video could get real complicated real quick, so let's stick to the most common green household worm food, which is food waste. Almost all fruit and vegetable waste is fine in a worm bin. Anything in the cucurbit family, like pumpkins, watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, and squash are worm favorites. Broccoli and cauliflower take a while to break down, but that's fine because they can provide some bulk and aeration in a worm bin. Banana peels and apple cores are fan favorites. Carrot peels, awesome. Coffee grounds are a really common addition to a worm bin. And considering the ridiculous amount of coffee I drink, the worms at Urban Worm HQ are probably sick of them. But contrary to what most people think, coffee grounds are pH neutral, so you don't have to worry about a low pH, but you should keep in mind that coffee grounds can dry out a worm bin a little too much. Most fruit and veggies make good worm food, but there are a few examples of food waste that not everyone loves. Citrus and onion peels, along with pineapple rinds, may not always agree with your worm bin. The same goes for fennel, herbs, and other aromatic vegetables waste. Now plenty of people do just fine with that stuff, but if I were you, I would stick with more common fruit and veggie waste. I would also stay away from potatoes and grain-based products, or at the very least use them in small quantities. One grain-based product you might want to try if you've run out of food is worm chow, a man-made product made from protein-rich cornmeal and other ingredients. While worm chow is great for fattening up your worms, you could also cause something called protein poisoning, which is where amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, begin fermenting inside a worm's gut, literally blowing it up from the inside. So just sprinkle this stuff on top of your vermicompost as a supplement rather than the main course. Okay, let's talk about our third subcategory of green waste, manures. Anyone who has dug through a manure pile has likely come across earthworms, possibly lots of them, munching away on animal poop that's somewhere between fresh from the animal's butt and fully composted and broken down. After a few weeks of composting to mellow things out, manures from non-meat eating animals are likely to be popular in your bin, but not all of them are the same. Let's break it down. The most common and easiest manure to get your hands on is horse manure. After a few weeks, horse manure loses its ammonia smell and it's pretty much good to go. Alpaca manure is very similar to horse manure as well. Beef cattle manure is great too. Dairy cattle and pigs make great manure, but it's liquidy and needs to go through some sort of liquid solid separation before you use it. 
Rabbit manure is one of the few manures that can be fed directly to worms, but be careful of salts if you're also dumping urine-soaked bedding into your worm bin as well. Lots of you worm weirdos are chicken weirdos too. Chicken manure has a carbon to nitrogen ratio of six to one, meaning it's way too hot or high in nitrogen to use without composting it with a high carbon bedding first. And just like with food waste, you shouldn't add large amounts of manure to your worm bin unless it's composted and resistant to further decomposition. Otherwise you risk generating heat and hot composting happening in your worm bin. So whether we're talking about fresh nitrogen rich food waste or fresh nitrogen rich manure, I would add these materials in thin layers of only one to two inches mixed with carbon rich browns. Most of you are home vermicomposters, so you're probably wondering about manure from your pets, specifically your cats and dogs. Dog and cat poop is likely to contain pathogens, so I advise against vermicomposting manure from any meat eating animals, and that includes you. It doesn't mean you can't vermicompost it over time, but I would never use the castings on any plants that you plan to eat. Worms have been shown to actually kill pathogens, but I wouldn't take that risk if I were you. Use on ornamentals only. I've got some really odd worm food questions, so I'm gonna give my opinions real fast on those before we wrap it up. Dryer lint. Probably fine, but the worms and bacteria won't be breaking down any polyester fibers that make their way into your lint trap. Hair and fingernails. This is kind of a weird one. It's not harmful, but keratin-based materials won't break down. You'll just end up with hair and fingernail infused worm castings. Old t-shirts. I would stick to 100% cotton, but understand that even a fully organic piece of clothing will take a long time to break down. The list of what you can put in your worm bin goes on and on. When I feed my worm bin, I'm always careful to err on the side of adding lots of carbon-rich brown bedding material. Not much bad happens when you add too much bedding. Lots of bad can happen, and it can happen quickly, when you add too much green material like food waste or fresh manure. You can end up with a low pH, bad odors, and a possibly toxic environment for your worms. My rule of thumb is that whenever I add in fresh nitrogen rich green waste, I want to add twice the volume of carbon rich bedding. The main exception to this two to one rule is when you add pre-composted manure to your worm bin. After four to six weeks and after the manure has gone through its heating cycle, you shouldn't need to add any additional carbon rich brown bedding. Okay guys, I've been doing vermicomposting for quite a few years now and I noticed that most people make one or more of six different mistakes when they get started. So I created a simple, easy to read guide called Rookie Vermicomposting Mistakes That Everyone Makes. If you click the little link above my left shoulder, you can sign up to get that guide immediately. I've gotten great feedback on PDF resources like this, so if you haven't gotten your copy, it's worth signing up and getting it right now. All right gang, that's it. We'll see you on the next video.